Open your Bibles with me to Psalm number 40. Psalm number 40. Verses 1, 2, and verse number 3. Psalm 40. Verses 1, 2, and 3 read, I've waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk tonight about the ripple effect of praise. The ripple effect of praise. I think I can say tonight without fear of successful contradiction that the most loved book in all of the Bible is the book of Psalms. Psalms is a book of hymnody. It is the music of the Hebrew people. Every shifting mood of human emotion can be found in the Psalms. There are Psalms of lament where the people of God wail and cry out to God. Then there are Psalms of praise where people thank God for deliverance. There are imprecatory psalms where the psalmist asks God to kill his enemies. I like those psalms really, really much. There are psalms of ascent that they sang in their festivals and their pilgrimages when they went up to the feast of tabernacles and the feast of Passover. The book of Psalms is a book of music. There are no chapters in the Psalms. Each of them are numbered because they are music. It's almost, it's almost impolite to read the Psalms because their hearts are being poured out and to follow them and listen to their music is, is, is almost to be imposing and to be uh, watching over their shoulders and to be snooping into their business. It's almost embarrassing to listen to it unless you feel it, unless you've been through it. It's like eavesdropping on a conversation unless you have experienced it. But let's, let's eavesdrop on them as they move in their pilgrimage singing their songs. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law doth he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's beautiful music. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. When I consider the heavens... The works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that you are so mindful of him? 
and the son of man that you would even visit him you've made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor people who don't even go to church know this psalm the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake come on you can say it with me yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup is running over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever that's beautiful music the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in the holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul under vanity nor sworn deceitfully but he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face O Jacob Selah lift up your head O ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in the battle lift up your head O ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in have mercy on me O God according to your loving kindness according to the multitude of your tender mercy blot out all my transgressions create in me a clean heart and renew within me the right spirit Lord thou has been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God and it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth he will not suffer even my foot to be moved behold he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is my keeper the Lord is the shade upon my right hand the sun shall not smite me by day nor the moon by night for the Lord shall preserve me from all evil he shall preserve my soul he shall preserve my going out and my coming in from this time forth even forever I waited patiently hey. on the Lord and he inclined his ear unto me he took my feet out of the miry clay and he put a new song in my mouth this psalm is written by King David David wrote Psalm 40 some scholars believe that Psalm 40, 40 is written when David is in Ziklag running from the wrath of envious Saul let me, let me stick a pin here 
Uh, you have to watch folk who are envious of you because they are different from folk who are jealous of you. People who are, people who are jealous of you, they, they try to walk like you. They try to style their hair the way you style your hair. They try to act like you and drive the same kind of car you drive. That's a sincere form of flattery. That's benign and innocuous. It's, it's nothing to anybody being jealous. But watch that Negro who is envious of you. Because people who are envious of you don't want what you have. They just don't want you to have it. And they will do everything they can to try to destroy you. But if God be for us, who can be against us? You want another psalm? Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass, and they shall wither as the green herb. David is running from the wrath of Saul. Or perhaps this psalm was written after David had been betrayed by his own son Absalom. But whenever David wrote this psalm, we see in it God's tenderness. God is tender towards us. God is loving towards us. God is not vengeful and capricious. The wrath of God does not mean that God is not loving or that there are two sides to God's personality. God is not two-sided in his personality. God is love indefatigably. God is love beyond definition. Here is how it works. As long as you are moving in the flow of God's love, you are encountering God's grace and God's blessings. The wrath of God can only be incurred if you are going against the flow of God's love. It does not mean that God has stopped loving. It means that you have moved out of the stream of God's love. And if you don't feel the closeness of God that you once felt, who moved? God is still right where he's always been, waiting to love you, waiting to bless you, waiting to be good to you. David says, I waited patiently. For the Lord and he inclined his ear unto me. Somebody ought to help me testify tonight. That worse than not waiting on God. Is wishing you had waited later on. Worse than not waiting on God. Is wishing you had waited later on. I hazard the hunch that some woman in here got her wedding ring on the wrong finger because you married the wrong man. You did not wait on God. And you're saying to yourself every day, if I had known then what I know now, I'd have left that boy right at his mama's house. Worse than not waiting on God is wishing you had waited later on. I waited patiently on the Lord because David has some experience with God. And when you walk with God, you know that God is tender hearted towards his children. As a father pitieth his children, so does God pity those of us who love him. God is always looking out for us. God is always on our side. God is always interested in what's going on in our lives. God is always tenderly concerned about our well-being. Many of you were raised like I was raised by a good mother and a good father. My father was the deacon at the True Light Baptist Church where I was raised. And my father was a deacon at our church and he would get on his knees to pray. And my father would pray and call every one of our names. 
And then he would remind God where we live. As if God did not know our names and our address and our telephone number. My father would get on his knees at the True Light Baptist Church and remind God of each of our names. And then he would tell God where we were living. And then my father would say, if you see my children walking in a way that I didn't raise them, catch them by the reins of their mind and turn them around before it's everlasting too late. He said, mark death and judgment across their path and bid them no further to go that way. And then my mother, when she got too old to get on her knees, she would sit on the side of the bed and rub her knees and pray and ask God, if you see my children going in a way that I didn't raise them, catch them by the reins of their mind and turn them around before it's a day and a time too late. And then she said to the Lord, if I'm not around, let somebody's heart be tender towards my children. And every time somebody shows me a kindness, every time somebody goes out of their way to be nice to me, everybody, every time somebody gives me something I don't deserve, I hear my mother say, if I'm not around, let somebody's heart be tender towards my children. I'm in this church tonight because somebody prayed for me. I'm a preacher tonight. I'm a Christian tonight. I'm blessed tonight because somebody was tender towards me. The Lord is slow to get angry and he is plenteous in his mercy. He's tender towards David. David knows something about the tenderness of God. God God's heart can be broken. God's spirit can be grieved. God can be made happy by us. You, you, you ever thought about that passage of scripture in the New Testament that um, when, when, a, when a sinner repents and comes back to God, the Bible says there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Listen, the angels are not rejoicing. That's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. So if that's rejoicing in the presence of the angels, then God must be the one doing the rejoicing. Somebody ought to help me preach it. And if God can rejoice over me, God can be grieved by me. And so in the tenderness of his heart, David says, I waited patiently because I know what happened the last time I waited. God was good to me the last time and so when I get in trouble this time the same God that brought me out last time can bring me out again I, I, I have a problem with these flimsy weak anemic Christians who can only praise God when they get a raise or they can only praise God when they get a new house or, or a new man or a new car. God is good all the time. On your worst day, it could be worse. Somebody ought to help me preach it. If, if you don't think it could be worse, you walk down the corridors of a hospital here in Indiana and see somebody who woke up this morning but they couldn't get up. God woke you up and you were able to get up and dress yourself. Nobody had to feed you. Nobody had to put your clothes on for you. That's enough for you to know that God has been tenderhearted towards you. It is of the Lord's mercy. I wish I had a Bible reader. That we are not consumed. And those mercies are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. Even when I'm unfaithful, God is still faithful. I waited patiently on the Lord. And he inclined his ear under me. 
David thanks God in this psalm that he's tender. But then in verse number two, not only is God tender towards us, but God touches us. It's right here in the text. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. In order for God to do that, he got to put his hands on me. He has to be touched, not only by my infirmities, but God touches me in my weakness. David says, I'm in a pit. I'm in a horrible pit. And in order for God to get me out, he got to put his hands on me. Somebody ought to help me preach it. If, if you're in a pit and a moralist comes by, the moralist will say to you, if you just get yourself together, you can get out of the pit. If, if you're in a pit and an ethicist comes by, he'll say, well, ethically speaking, you should have gone around on another side. If you're in a pit and an optimist comes by, he said, stay there a little while longer and tomorrow is another day. If you're in a pit and a pessimist comes by, the pessimist will say to you, well, you shouldn't have fallen in the pit in the first place. If you're in a pit and a Muslim comes by, the Muslim will say to you, once you get yourself together, come on over to the temple and we'll show you how to get your life back on track. But if you're in a pit and Jesus comes by, he'll get in the pit with you, clean you up, put you back on your feet. And if you fall in the pit again, he'll get back in there with you again, clean you up and put you back on your feet. And if you fall in the pit again, He'll get back in there with you again. If you confess your sins. I wish I had a Bible reader. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I hope you invite me back after I say what I'm about to say. But I, I started preaching at 18 years old. I've been in church all my life. I used to play the music at our church. I'm an organist and a pianist. You better ask somebody. I know how to play that organ over there. Uh, I, 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 I used to play the music at our church. And when I was at Bishop College, I made my money at the New Hope Baptist Church, playing the music for New Hope Church, $35 a week. I was bawling and shot calling on the campus at Bishop College. In 1977, with $35 a week, I was the man with $35 a week. I've been in church all my life. And then I started preaching at 18. I started pastoring at 20. I never had a young adult life. I've never been to a club. I've never been drunk. I've never smoked weed. I've never done anything that young adults do. I'm, I can't wait to retire. When I retire, I'm going to a club. I'm going to get drunk. Yeah, that's how y'all do it. Come on, you can help me. I'm going to smoke weed. I'm going to do everything y'all been doing and coming to church. But, but, here, but here, here's the point I'm trying to get at. Every sin I ever committed I committed when I was in church. I never had a young adult life. I, I never been to a club. I never got drunk. I never smoked weed. So all the sins I committed, I committed since I've been a Christian. Somebody ought to help me preach it. 
I'm talking about playing the music at church. I'm talking about preaching the gospel. I have sinned since I have been saved. But since I've been saved, my sinning has not separated me from God's love. Because God is so tender towards me. I wish I had a witness here. He knows my down sitting. He knows my uprising. He knows my thoughts even before I think them. Somebody ought to help me here. And since I've been a Christian, I have sinned, but I've never fallen away from the love of God because Paul says in Romans, I am persuaded that life nor death, angels nor principalities, things present nor things to come, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. I cannot lose my salvation. Because I didn't do anything to gain my salvation. I am saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And every time I sin, God forgives. Because the scripture says, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Now, I know some of y'all so holy, you got large print in your Bible, and you answer your phone, praise the Lord. Somebody asks you how you're doing, you're too blessed to be stressed, and you're blessed and highly favored. Well, for the crooks in here like me, who know that some days you get up on the wrong side of the bed, I wish I had a witness here. For the crooks in here like me who know that there are some days you don't look like a Christian. You don't sound like a Christian. You don't act like a Christian. But being a Christian is not about how I look or how I sound or how I act. One day Jesus died for me. And I believe what he did on the cross was efficacious for my sin. His blood covers me. From a multitude of sin. Well, let me let me let me let me let me call Paul who can say it better than I can. Paul said, every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. The good that I would do, I find myself not doing, and the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. Oh wretched man. Not that I was, but that I am. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God's tenderness is in verse number one. God's touch is in verse number two but in verse number three is God's transformation he put a new song in my mouth I'm trying to get in my seat now but 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 I don't I don't um, I, I don't particularly care for this new music they singing in church call me old school call me call me old-fashioned call me whatever you want I don't, I don't like this new stuff. Because if it's new, it's, it's not true. I, I, I like the choir a minute ago singing Because He Lives. It ain't nothing wrong with Because He Lives, I can face tomorrow. Now listen, don't get me wrong, I, I like all kinds of music. Uh, my pastor is B.B. King. Now, now, now if that offends you, pray for me. I am a sinner saved by grace. And my pastor is B.B. King. I've been downhearted, woman, ever since the day we met. Life with you ain't nothing but the blues. And how blue can you get? I bought you a brand new Ford. You said I want a Cadillac. I bought you a $10 dinner. 
You said it was just a snack. I let you live in my penthouse. You said it was just a shack. I gave you seven children. <laughs> I see some more crooks in here like me tonight. And, and, and I don't have anything against, I don't have anything against Jay-Z. I ain't got nothing against Beyonce. I'm, all, all of that's good. That's wonderful. Those genres of music are fine in their place. But when I come to church, I need to hear somebody sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I need to hear somebody singing down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I need to hear somebody singing blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of, of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. This is my story. I wish I had a witness here. This is my song. I'm praising my savior. All the day long. Thank God he put a new song in my mouth. He, I said he put a new song. A, a new song. And the song is not new as I knew when I sing it. Because you can sing Amazing Grace and still not be new. You, you, you can sing Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone and it still not mean anything to you. But when the Lord has taken you out of the miry clay. When he's taken you out of the mire and put you in the choir. When he's taken you out of the mess that you got yourself in and established your going, you're able to sing a new song. Somebody in here tonight can remember when you were on your way to hell and the Lord cut loose your stammering tongue, took your feet out of the miry clay and set them on a solid rock. And since God has been good to you, you don't care who's looking at you. You don't care what anybody says about you. You don't care what anybody else's opinion is of you. You woke up this morning with your mind stayed on Jesus. It doesn't matter who's preaching. It doesn't matter what choir is singing. It doesn't matter who the ushers are. You just came to give God the praise. You just came to open your mouth and tell God thank you. Thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for the doors you've opened. Thank you for the ways you've made. Thank you for the enemies you've put down. Thank you for the friends that you raised up. Thank you that I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you for Jesus. Y'all know him, don't you? You don't mind if I talk about him, do you? Jesus, early in the morning. Jesus, late in the midnight hour. Jesus, he's Adam's redeemer. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on fire. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Gideon's fleece. He's Samson's power. He's David's music. He's Solomon's wisdom. He's Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. Y'all know him, don't you? He's God's only son. He's Mary's baby boy. He's James and Jude's older brother. He's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John's word made flesh. He's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know him, don't you? He's distinctive in supernatural capacity. He's superlative in sovereign majesty. 
He's exclusive in spiritual beauty. He's radiant in eternal splendor. He's matchless in supernal deity. He's the God of gods. He's the prince of princes. He's the Pharis of 10,000. He's a bright and a morning star. He's a way out of no way. Y'all know him, don't you? Is there anybody here who came to give God the praise? Is there anybody here glad to be in the service just one more time? If the Lord opened doors for you, why don't you tell God thank you? If the Lord made a way for you, why don't you give God the glory? If the Lord saved your soul, why don't you shout hallelujah? He died, didn't he die? But bright and early Sunday morning, he rose from the grave. Didn't he rise with all power in his hand? I wish I had a witness tonight. Did the Lord show you tenderness? Did the Lord touch you one day? Did the Lord transform you? Then you got a new song in your mouth. Come on, help me thank him. Come on, help me praise him. Come on, help me lift him up. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worthy. I know he's all right. nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord he walks with me he talks with me he tell me I am his own if he's been good to you why don't you grab somebody why don't you shake somebody's hand tell them you don't know like I know you can't tell it like I can tell it. What the Lord has done for me, he's been a way maker. He's been a problem solver. He's been a bridge over troubled water. He's been a mother for me. He's been a father for me. Can you tell him thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know he's all right.